there guys and welcome back to yeah. another FPV guy yeah, video. Stuck, right? As you know this week I'm hanging out at Inadrone 2018 and I'm visiting with Ballard Power Systems right now and, and with me here is Jim. Jim, everywhere I go in this show I'm seeing power cells, fuel cells. What's going on? So, uh, fuel cells have been around for a while. Uh, Ballard's been uh, around for 30 years. Our particular group has been working in UAVs for about 10 years. Uh, but fuel cells, what fuel cells can provide for drones is two to three uh, times the flight time uh, of batteries. So it's the main uh, benefit of a fuel cell power system. So, say if we say three times, that means if I have right now 60 minutes of flight time, my Multi-rotor can fly three hours. Yes. So that's uh, yeah. It depends on the specifics of the platform for most, but for most applications, most platforms, we can we can do at least two, three times the flight time. Now, and what's the price point? We were looking at a unit here, and you told me it's right in there with a very nice car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're still, you know, we're still doing production in low, low volume, so the systems, depending on the power requirement and uh, some of the options, can can range anywhere between. Uh, Fifteen to thirty-five thousand dollars, all in. Um, and that, you know, with with volume and more use, the, that would come way down. But uh, that's where we're standing right now. So, you know, for, it's not going to work for all applications. Uh, but for certain applications where you have a high a high value proposition, uh, and, uh, you know, the cost benefits of the fuel cell outweigh the, the upfront cost. Uh, it's a very well. I mean, the big thing I imagine right here would be eyes on target for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the applications we've been looking a lot at are uh, infrastructure inspection, uh, agri any kind of agricultural application where you need a lot of, a lot of area coverage, uh, package delivery, uh, you know, and, you know for most applications, people want more flight time, but there's a few that really stand out for us. I, I would assume DOD is also part of your customers? Yeah, we've been working with uh, various DOT outfits for, for, like I said, about a decade. A lot of our uh, work initiated with the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. They had they have developed a couple different demonstration platforms, including the Ion Tiger, which flew one of our systems for 26 hours continuously on compressed hydrogen. 26 hours. Yeah. Uh, and then they actually made a liquid hydrogen version that flew for 48 hours. 48 hours flight time. And we are talking a battery this big. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the fuel cell's about that size. The tank, the fuel tank was was about 22 liters. So 22 liters will divide it by four, and we have about five gallons of fuel. Just for those of you guys thinking gallon-sized milk jugs, imperial units. But yeah, still, still flying 48 hours is a lot of time. Oh yeah, it's, uh, in some cases maybe impractical for if you have a human uh, doing the operation. But uh, yeah, just it just shows what the capabilities are. And, and you're telling me that you, you can many times extend a multi-rotor by about three times, yep. but fixed wings you're finding you can extend it by five times. Yeah, or, or more. Yeah, uh, you know, there's different uh, efficiencies associated with two type of platforms. So, uh, because of the uh, fixed wing design, they have high L over D, they don't need a lot of power to stay aloft, so we can operate the fuel cell basically at a more efficient point yeah. and consume less fuel. So, so you're really Punching it for climb out, yeah. and then you're just cruising at a very, very low sustain or sustain rate. Yeah, and actually, one of the things that we do uh, for most all of our systems is hybridize with the battery, and uh, what that allows us to do is make the fuel cell smaller to, to provide the power for the cruise, it provides power for the payload, and then a little bit of extra power to recharge the battery, and then the battery gets uh, tapped into for the, for the takeoff to provide that extra power, and maybe some high speed. Oh, yeah. so that allows you, need, you, you to need to punch it. Yeah, you kind of get the, the the specific power benefit of the battery and the specific energy benefit of the fuel cell. So, yeah, so you're actually benefiting from having a lower sustained rate from the fuel cell. Yeah, and more recently we've been working with in situ. Uh, we've developed a system for, the, for use on the in situ Scan Eagle, 
which is a 50 pound uh, 10 foot wingspan yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, fixed wing it's aircraft. It's, I think the most used uh, aircraft in that size class. I think they have over, over a million kilometers of flight hours in operation. Wow. Yeah. So that's made uh, a good, good work, work for us. And we're just doing the flight testing with them. So, kind of, so the next stage. I, I have to ask, of course, now, like I said, there's a lot of fuel cells here this year. Yeah. Yeah. Why should we go with Ballard fuel systems? <laughs> Why you guys? Yeah. What do so, you do you know, better? So there's, there's, there's two different types of fuel cells. Um, what, what Ballard does in the UAV space is, is a liquid cooled, cooled fuel cell. And what that allows uh, us to accomplish is to have a more rugged system. Uh, it's able to operate in a wider environmental range, higher altitudes. Um, it starts up more quickly. It's just it's a more rugged system. Uh, the other type of system that uh, some of our competitors use is called an air-cooled fuel cell. Uh, it does have a lot of benefits. It's a, it's a more simple system. Uh, it's lighter weight. And so for multi-rotor applications, it's actually a very nice fit. Um, oh, I'm talking to the wrong guy then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but it does have a limitation in terms of environmental conditions. So depending on what your needs are, what your application is, uh, it may not be the right. The right well, if you're operation. flying at 30,000 feet, it gets cold. Yeah. Yeah. So then in that case, you know, that's why we've had a lot of ex uh, background in the military space because well, I mean, I, I just saw with the wide environmental range. That's why it's right. That's why we've been working in that space for a while. And you were telling me that the. The military has different categories of drones, and you guys are really most suitable in some yeah. of the sizes. Yeah, the, the, the two size classes we've typically worked in is in Group 1 and Group 2. Uh, group 1 is uh, UAVs less than 20 pounds. Um, we typically will... That's pretty much everything I fly. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, we, we work best in the 10 to 20 pound range because the, we'll sorry, the picture. because the fuel cell is uh, about there's like some inert weight that you have to take on to put the fuel right. cell on the vehicle. Uh, so you need to have a vehicle that can, can carry the fuel cell essentially. Um, and then uh, Group Two is, a, is probably our best fit area. Group Two is 20 to 50 pound aircraft. Like I said, the Scan Eagle is a 50 pound aircraft. The, the systems that NRL flew were in the 30 to 40 pound range. Uh, so. Uh, and then there are some no, large uh, multi-rotor yeah, I mean, platforms, it is for, uh, uh, you know, hex or octocopters yeah, yeah, yeah. that are in that size class. Oh yes, That's definitely. We trade out yeah, we need some Interesting. So Jim, awesome, man. Thank you. what's your website? Website uh, www.ballard.com. B a l l a r d. Just like uh, the, 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 com. <laughs> so guys, if you want to know more about Ballard fuel systems, and it's really one of the upcoming things because our hobby is transferring from being a hobby to be very big commercial money, and, and obviously anybody that buys thirty-five thousand dollar batteries has money and they also and the, what, you, what I'm seeing here also this year and you're talking about AG scanning and everywhere I'm backing up I'm walking backwards into a fire marshal <laughs> because with the fires in California everybody's interested in not scanning a field but scanning a mountain range for burnable biomass and you guys really are looking really good because when you have a fire that costs three billion dollars $30,000 to scan the entire mountain range is not a big proposition. And, uh, like I said, the, the liquid cold system uh, is more uh, adaptable for those environmental conditions. If you have a smoky environment, uh, you can filter the air so that you can keep the fuel cell running. And you have to so you can operate in a wide range yep. and you can cover a ton of land. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything that can fly 48 hours—that's a lot of scanning. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's just that's an example of how how much flight time can be achievable. With that's an example, but yeah. but that's really where a lot of these operators are going to. Mm -hmm. Fixed wings, yeah. you can do things that you can't do with a 30-minute quad. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. I finally figured out why there's fuel cells everywhere, <laughs> and I'm also figuring out that there is fire marshals everywhere looking to buy drones this year. So a lot of interesting things are going to happen. Stay tuned, we've got more videos coming up from Inner Drone, of course brought to you by carolinadrones.com. Stay tuned and make sure to check out the website. Thank you, everybody.